1988, uh, aviation entrepreneur, the late Sir Tim Wallace, uh, created the very first Warbirds and Classic Aircraft display um, at Wanaka Airport uh, in central Otago, obviously. Um, and I think he contributed because he was a great one for renovating a particular Spitfire, as I remember. Um, and uh, he started this war sh Warbirds show um, in 1988. And uh, since that time, Warbirds over Wanaka has become the premier um, air show um, in New Zealand, uh, attracting an incredible array, and that's the amazing part about of international aircraft uh, that have bemused, amused, entertained, and thrilled, and sometimes horrified, I have to say, depending how close to the ground they went, um, there's folk who have gone and seen these particular shows. Um, joining us to talk about this year's one, because... My memory, I, I got tickets to the 2022 one for the first time ever, uh, and it was cancelled. Mm, I know. And I'm pretty sure the 2021 was cancelled, both for the same reasons, COVID. Um, but 2024 is definitely on, and talking us uh, about it and through it, and the program that's available, is the general manager of Warbirds over Wanaka, Ed Taylor, and he joins us now. Ed, thank you very much for joining us. Good morning, Michael. That's right, isn't it? It was cancelled in 2020 and 2022. Yeah, we were well. we were one of the <clears throat> we were one of the first major events in New Zealand to cancel in March 2020. Uh, when the balloon went up, it was a big shock. We were two weeks out from the air show, so unwinding it was a a huge exercise. But we'd been prudent and we had a a fund to um, to cover us in the event of of any sort of major cancellation. Uh, then we thought, well, this will all be gone by 2022, but it wasn't, and we couldn't hold the air show in 2022 either. So it's been a real hard slog. We're, we're run by a community trust. We've had to beg, steal and borrow to get where we are today and to bring the team back together to put on this event this Easter. So there's a huge amount of excitement. The built up, the pent up demand has been um, unprecedented. Um, you know, we've sold out a lot of the grandstand tickets, you know, previously we never did, but um, we have now this time round. Still plenty of tickets, though, for the air show. General admission tickets are three days or one day tickets. So, yeah, but it's been a, it's been a mission to survive, and I just can't believe the support we're getting. Um, you talked about the aircraft lineup, and um, today we've just announced um, a Mosquito. This is a World War Two fighter bomber um, which was uh, built by the de Havilland company in the UK uh, and it was in the early air show years Michael it was the fastest uh, combat aircraft on either side um, so it was an amazing aircraft that could do a, a huge amount of roles a multi-role aircraft from fighter bomber to uh, light bomber to night reconnaissance and attack and maritime attacking uh, so it was a great aircraft and um, the, the RNZAF bought 80 of these uh, back in the day after the war, just after the war, and um, as, as the sort of main combat aircraft for the Royal New Zealand Air Force. There were 80 of them here. And then, of course, they, a few years later, they, were, uh, they made way for the vampire, and these old mosquitoes were just um, sold off um, for scrap or whatever. And, and, and this one, um, a guy bought it uh, to run the engines for, uh, to, uh, to power up the um, frost fighting on a... Um, on a, oh, on really? a orchard, orchard yeah. near Rewaka, near Nelson. So, yeah. and the plane itself just sat out in the paddock, and then it passed through a whole lot of different hands uh, until it, a restoration uh, on it started about 15 years ago, and um, the ownership changed again. And so now it's ended up in the ownership of uh, a couple of American guys who have um, who had the wherewithal to get it finished. And uh, it's just about finished now. The engines are in. The um, the radiators are in. They will be doing a, the first engine runs hopefully later this week, maybe next week. And then they've got a month to get it absolutely flying and perfect for the air show. So that's that's a huge 
aircraft. For, for Warbird fans, um, the sight of a mosquito with its twin big engines uh, coming smoking through with a Spitfire on one side and a P-51 Mustang on the other will um, have the Warbird fans in the crowd just um, so excited. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great news. The, the P-51, we've got a couple coming Actually, can to I just take, we'll, just before you just yeah. take, well, you take a breath, but it, um, the, you've, you've just mentioned the number of tickets. How many people are you expecting? Because it's uh, 29, well, 30, 30, 30 31st. Yeah, we're so how many tickets you sold? Uh, how many so far? 20, and how many are people you expecting? Uh, well, in 2018, we had 55,000 people over the three days. So yeah, uh, we're expecting at least that. So, um, you know, and the way the tickets have gone. Uh, but, we, you know, we have, um, we will have full capacity here at some stage. Um, we've never been tested on that before. So uh, we're just looking at that at the moment. But plenty of GA tickets still to go. So we're, but we're, um, we're getting there. And it's, um, it's really, it's got caught people's imagination, I think. You know, um, just the variety of acts. I, I was just going to say the P-51, one of the P-51 Mustangs has just been completed a restoration. This is another XRNZAF aircraft. Hasn't flown in 67 years. The Mosquito hasn't flown in nearly eight. Years, uh, 70 years. So, um, so it's these, these are old aircraft that have just sat in people's sheds and garages, and you know, not having the wherewithal to do the restoration because this is a multi-million-dollar job restoring these aircraft. Uh, yeah, can but, I just, but, you know, just going going to the uh, tickets themselves? You've got a variety yeah. of tickets because um, it's always been regarded as a very expensive event. And sure enough, if you buy the Titanium Pass or the Gold Pass, which I might add just quietly, I've got two Gold Passes for this year's event. Um, so Lucky I've already boy. I've bought my tickets. Um, the, you've got a Titanium Pass that's six hundred bucks. You've got the Gold Pass, which is four fifty. You've then yeah. got down to general admission, and uh, you can get in for sixty nine dollars. Um, for a Friday, $99, $15 for a kid, which is fantastic. Uh, the kids 16 and under. Um, yeah. So you've got a variety of packages there. What is the most popular of those passes? Is it the general admission or is it the slightly more expensive ones? Well, we end up having a lot more people coming to general admission and right. uh, but but of the of the premium passes, as I say, we've sold out of uh, we've sold out of gold, silver, and uh, the titanium. The titanium tickets, believe it or not, sold out in, within a week. So, mm. um, yeah. And what about so the, the, what the, the, also the Hurricane Tim Marquis? Have you got one of those? Yep. Any of those years? No, no, they all sold out as well. So, uh, yeah, so people are wanting to come to the issue. We get a lot of international visitors. We've got people coming from Europe, from the United States, a lot of Australians coming. Uh, a lot of them are coming on tour and on tour groups, etc. We've got up on the, you, you, you'd you know, uh, Wanaka Airport, uh, Michael, and up mm. on above the airport, there's a terrace up there. And the local farmer, he's got 550 camper vans booked in there through the Motor Caravan Association. Yeah. Well, that's just the most unique view of an air show in the world. So it's sort of on the bucket list of all the um, all the grey grey nomads doing the doing the circle around New Zealand, and they they make a beeline for Wanaka. That sold out back in August last year. So they get a view. They can see the um, the eyes of the pilots as they're coming screaming through the um, the airfield. So that's unique in the world as well. And then other aircraft will dip down into the Clutha River. Another unique experience. So yeah, it's a, it's a pretty Pretty special place to hold an air show, and we have no trouble with uh, attracting international air forces. The United States are coming again with vengeance. Yeah, so what bring, are they bringing? Yeah. Uh, the F-16 Fighting Falcon. F-16, demonstration you've got a, thing. you've got an F-16. Dear Lord. Well, yeah, there's a couple coming down to uh, to rack up the place. Uh, the, um, the the head demonstration pilot came popped in last week actually, and he's so excited about flying in a place like this. They're based up in Japan. There's an air base up there in Sawa. They're bringing two F-16s down, so just in case one goes redundant. So, uh, But, you know, we're trying to talk them into doing a two-ship display through, but we'll see what happens. They're also bringing a huge Globemaster, the, you know, twice the size of a Hercules, and, um, and maybe even a little bit more that's not confirmed yet. The Australians are coming with a Spartan. And the Royal New Zealand Air Force, this is sort of their major air show of the year. Uh, for them as well, and and they're, they're huge supporters of our air show, and they're bringing 
everything they can, uh, including the new Poseidon, which hasn't displayed at an air show in New Zealand yet. That's the new maritime surveillance aircraft that replaced the Orion. So it's going to be beautiful to see that come in low over Wanaka. And, uh, and also we're going to be farewelling the C-130H Hercules. They've been around for 60 years, um, even uh, a little bit longer, not quite as long as you, um, Michael, I wouldn't suggest. No, actually, no, it's very kind of you to say, but in actual fact, I have been around longer. Listen, I'm looking at some of the aircraft that you've got. Um, you've got the Mustang, um, one of the great uh, World War II fighters, yep. obviously. You've got the Corsair with the slightly strange wings. Uh, you've got the Kitty Hawk, which was there early on. Spitfire, of course. The Yaks, the, um, more Mustangs. Um, the Avro Anson, I've, I listen, and the Grumman Adventure. Can I just ask the obvious question? Why? Why for... N and I, I, I wasn't born until the late 50s. Why, and I imagine that would be roughly the sort of age of people come born in the 50s and 60s and 70s. Why are we so fascinated by particularly World War II aircraft? I think it's because we all grew up with stories of Uncle Tom who flew Corsairs or uh, was uh, seconded to the RAF and flew Spitfires in the war or great uncle or granddad. Uh, and those stories are passed down through families. And it, it, it's a part of maybe people's DNA that, you know, the, the, those great wars are still, um, you know, we've got international conflicts going on now, but those great wars, when you look at the statistics and, and how, unbelievably sort of in the end how some ways futile they were and the loss of human life um, but you know and, and I think it just resonates with people I still remember learning about the world wars at school I don't know if they still do but um, you know Actually, and, believe and it or not, they do yeah the causes of good. world war one world war two they still teach at history at school 